Good day students and welcome to our video tutorial on spreadsheets. Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet application software package that we use for EDPM. We're going to look at spreadsheet basics and then I'll take you through the creation of a spreadsheet. We'll look at performing calculations and we'll also look at inserting charts. So first for the basics, Microsoft Excel is the application which we are going to use and spreadsheets are used for working with figures and displaying work in graphs. Each document open in Microsoft Excel is called a book or a workbook as we will see when we move into the application software. A workbook is made up of cells so these rectangular areas are called cells and spreadsheets are really a grid of cells which are organized into rows which run horizontally and columns which run vertically. Rows are identified by numbers while columns are identified by letters. Each cell is uniquely identified by a letter number combination which we refer to as the cell address. An active cell is highlighted with a darker border called the cell pointer. A formula is often used in spreadsheet. This is an equation used to perform calculations. To enter a formula into a cell, you always use the equal sign, which means that the equal sign precedes all formulae used in a spreadsheet. Some common functions used in Microsoft Excel include the sum function, which adds all the numbers in a range of cells, the average function, which calculates the average of a range of cells, the count function, which, is, which counts the number of cells that contain numbers, the if function, which makes a choice allows the spreadsheet to make a choice depending on a what if and what that what if function finds. The count if function counts the number of cells that meet the given criteria or a specific item. The max function returns the largest or maximum number in a range of cells, while the min function returns the smallest or minimum number in a range of cells. Now, we're going to open, I'm going to open the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet application software package so that you can have a visual of what the spreadsheet looks like. So on screen, we can see an example of a book or a workbook in Microsoft Excel. Here we have the book, book number. So this will be whatever you save the, the book as, the spreadsheet as. We have our menus file home insert the menu or the ribbon and here we have our columns which are identified by letters and our rows which are identified identified by numbers clicking in a row or a cell will make it active so this darkened border around this cell and this cell is a1 how do we know that this cell is A1? We simply go to our name box and here we see displayed the name of the cell. At the right of the name box, we are going to find the formula bar and here will be displayed the contents of each cell. So if I click in another cell, B3, B3 is active, D7. The border around D7 is the active cell. So I can use the cursor keys or the mouse to click and move or navigate within my spreadsheet. So this is basically the interface that you will be working with in spreadsheets. It's the tabular layout or tables. It's similar to tables because the data will be arranged in rows and columns. Next, we're going to create a simple spreadsheet. 
what we call a simple spreadsheet exercise to demonstrate all the basic things we have learned about this spreadsheet. So in this simple spreadsheet exercise, we are going to calculate monthly expenditure by first starting, starting with looking at the monthly income and the weekly expenditure for a student. Now one thing to note here is I have typed in A1, I've typed in A2, and I've typed in A3. So while the information or data appears to move across into B, to the B column, if I click in the B column and look at my formula bar, I'm not going to see any contents in the B column. So the information that is typed in A1, although it appears to spread across into cell C C1, it actually is only in cell A1. Okay, so this is a way to know what information you have or what data you have in the contents of each of your cells. And while we are, we are on this, let's look at how do we increase the size of a column. To increase the size of a column, we place our cursor between the, the column letters and once the cursor turns into a solid line and a double-headed horizontal arrow, we click and drag so that the curse, the column is widened. So now you can see clearly the information contained in A1 and we still have it appearing as if it's going over to B1. So let's correct that. A1, A2 and A3. To increase the row height, it's, this, it's a similar process, a, a solid horizontal line and a double-headed vertical arrow. Click between the two row numbers that you want to increase the height for and si simply drag down to increase the height or drag up to, to decrease the height of the row. So under expenditure, we're looking at items such as food, stationary, traveling, and miscellaneous item, items that a student may purchase. So I'm just going to populate this spreadsheet with some figures and we're going to come back and uh, perform some calculations. So the spreadsheet has been populated with some data. We have the headings, simple spreadsheet exercise, monthly income, weekly expenditure on food, stationery, traveling, and miscellaneous items for the student. And we have the expenditure broken down into weeks one, two, three, and four. We need to house or to save the student's monthly income amount in a cell. So we're gonna save that or we're gonna enter that in cell B and the student's income, monthly income, is $750. While we are looking at these figures, I'm going to show you how we format those figures. We go into general, we are on the home ribbon. We go into the number tab and we're changing general to currency. And it's going to ask you to how many decimal places and we want to leave it at two decimal places and click OK. You are going to notice that numbers in spreadsheets are aligned to the right while words and other data is aligned to the left. So that's one of the um, particulars about spreadsheets. All numbers are aligned to the right. Similarly, we are going to format these cells so that they reflect the same currency option. Once again, we, go, we are on the home menu or the home ribbon. And you can also use this drop-down arrow, which is a shortcut, or you go into the dialog box and you select currency.
click OK. So automatically, it's all of your numbers would have turned into the currency formatting option. So there's no need to go into each individual cell and insert a number sign dot and the, num the decimal point and the number of cells. The number of cents, sorry. Some simple formatting tools, we can bold our heading by clicking on the heading and we don't need to click and block once this border, this thick border is around the cell, we know that it's active, so we click bold. So you see that the text there changed to bold, to the bold format. Similarly, for monthly income, we can make that heading bold as well and weekly expenditure and the others the other subheadings for weekly expenditure we're going to pull that as well you notice that when i selected a range of cells and a range of cells is a cell block which runs from one cell continuously to another number of neighboring cells so weekly expenditure was the first active cell and I clicked across and you can see that each of these cells was also selected. Although weekly expenditure does not appear as if it is selected, it is or it has been selected. And we know this because of that border around, that dark border around the cells, which means that the cells are active. So in part one of the spreadsheet, we looked at of spreadsheets we looked at spreadsheet basics what is a spreadsheet and the parts of a spreadsheet and common functions used in the spreadsheet and we also looked at creating a simple spreadsheet we are going to move on now to part two of this video series where we will be looking at uh, performing simple calculations and inserting a chart into the spreadsheet.